Tonight, Twitter's CFO gets his Twitter account hacked. Apple CEO Tim Cook can now officially burn money. And Google tries to explain that a rash is not necessarily rabies. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 272, for Tuesday, February 10th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great-tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like strawberry Greek yogurt pretzels. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. If you're Twitter CFO Anthony Noto and you're cringing with embarrassment because your Twitter account got hacked today, at least you're in good company. In addition to Noto, Newsweek's official Twitter account, Delta Airlines' official Facebook account, and even Forbes' Thought of the Day widgets were hacked. Although in the Forbes case, the hack was only revealed today, whereas the compromise happened late last year. Cybersecurity experts are blaming China for the Forbes hack, saying that visitors to the Forbes site from November 28th to December 1st were vulnerable. Sources also claim that the average Forbes reader is not at risk since the hack was meant to target specific individuals. Just in time, the White House announced a new cybersecurity agency modeled after the National Counterterrorism Center that the government created after 9-11. We want cyber criminals to feel the full force of American justice because they are doing as much damage, if not more these days, as folks who are involved in more conventional crime. The new federal agency will be called the Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center, or the CTIIC, and it will be charged with monitoring cybersecurity threats, pooling and analyzing information, and will be, run, will be run with existing funds from the 2015 budget, along with an additional request of $35 million in the 2016 budget proposal for the agency. Last week, we heard rumors that Microsoft was considering an investment in Cyanogen, the open source Android phone that's stripped of Google services. Recode, Recode reports that Cyanogen was ta has tapped Microsoft, as well as several other tech giants, including Amazon, for their next round of funding. Today in San Francisco, Apple CEO Tim Cook was in the middle of a speaking engagement at the Goldman Sachs Technology Conference just as the markets closed, and news hit that Apple became the first U.S. company to close at a market value of more than $700 billion. We've invited longtime Mac expert and former Macworld guru Jason Snell to talk to us about it. Hi, Jason. Hi, Megan. Good to be here. So you listened to the speech today. What were the most interesting things that Tim Cook had to say? Uh, he was replaying a lot of things that we heard when he talked to analysts a couple of weeks ago when they made their results known. Got a big round of applause for the $700 billion valuation. And uh, I think the most surprising thing was he talked about uh, Apple's investment in a solar farm in Monterey County, which is going to power their new campus and all their Apple stores and a new factory that they're building in Newark. So it's a uh, it's interesting that, that um, you know, the financial industry has not always been thrilled about Apple's uh, approach toward green tech because they feel like uh, the people in that in, investors want just want the money. They don't want to change the world. They just want their money. And Cook, uh, he did a good job. He pushed back on them and said, "Look, not only do we think this is the right thing to do, but we do think it's actually a good business decision. And that by uh, locking in this renewable power at rates that they can uh, bank on, that it's going to be good for the company's bottom line too. But certainly, I think uh, they they like doing green power instead of what uh, he called brown power." Right. So when is he starting to build it? Did he give us an idea of when that was going to happen? So they've got a they've got a partner. It's supposed to be approved, I think, by the Monterey County uh, Board of Supervisors or whoever approves that in Monterey County. Uh, people who know Monterey and think of it as being this cold, foggy place by the uh, by the bay. Uh, it, actually, the southeastern corner of Monterey County is closer to the Central Valley and it's pretty sunny and warm out there. So that that. Uh, that plan, they're working with a, a partner that's been trying to build it for a while now, and it turns out that Apple's a big mover in that. And I think they're hoping that, that that's going to start rolling this year and they can start building it. Well, that's good news. Um, so Cook obviously talked about the Apple Watch. We're still expecting it in April, right? He didn't move her up or back that date. 
Well, they had been saying what uh, early, so first quarter, and so yeah, April. We'll see it. We'll see it sometime by the end of April, I think. And that, that's not changing. He he uh, wears one and was talking about it while showing it on his wrist. And there are a lot of Apple employees, he said, who are wearing them now. And they and you know, he said it's really changed his life, and he uses it all the time. He uses the Siri on the Apple Watch all the time. It is interesting that if you go to Apple's campus, you will see people walking around with the Apple Watch. This is because they already announced it. They have the advantage of being able to wear it in public without everybody freaking out and thinking, "Oh my God, is that the next you know iPhone or whatever?" This is the Apple Watch. Everybody knows it's coming out, and as a result, they're much more open about uh, about the fact that Apple employees are using them. And I think that'll be good actually for the product because they they're able to use them in public and find out what works and what doesn't work and tweak the software accordingly. I think it's a good thing. Right. You know, I kind of think maybe they're just they're all ready to go. They just are slowly eking it out there so we want one even more. Yeah, this, I think the software they're still putting it together. I think the hardware's probably done at this point, but this is a first generation product, so I, I'm sure they're trying to squeeze every last minute of battery life out of it and get the software to be as power efficient as possible so that they can quote the best number for battery life when they launch it. Right. So will you get one? Will you wait in line for one or will you wait for one? Well, I, I will get one because it's kind of my business to write about Apple. If I was a regular consumer, I don't know. I had a Pebble for a couple of years now. Um, so I kind of like the idea of doing a smartwatch. And as an iPhone user, the Android Wear watches just don't apply to me. So I'm sure Apple is going to make this Apple Watch super integrated with the iPhone. Given how huge the iPhone is and the numbers we saw about iPhone sales in the last couple of weeks... Um, it's it's smart of Apple to say, look, this is the, going to be a great iPhone accessory because that's a huge addressable market. And so as an iPhone user, I'm part of that market. So I'm excited about it. I am not a line waiter. I'm not going to wait in line for it. It will be interesting to see if they make enough of these, whether, they, uh, whether they're whether they readily available at launch or whether they're constrained. You know, sometimes you wonder if Apple engineers those lines so that they can get news coverage about their, about their launch. And I think they do sometimes. So it'll be interesting to see if they do that with a watch or not. Right. That It'll be interesting. So it's like you can be hired as an Apple line waiting extra or something. Yeah, I mean, they, they will often say, well, this is only available in the store and we're not going to take any pre-orders. And that is saying you're going to wait in line because we want people waiting in line on Fifth Avenue in New York City because it's really good for the cameras. And, and then those people will go and wait in line. And a, a lot of times by the end of that day, you could just walk into the store and get one of whatever right. it is. But people like to be on TV. Apple likes them on TV. TV likes there to be lines so they have a story to tell it's a it's a nice uh environment for everybody but uh you know i think it'll be a popular product i i want i i doubt that they will be able to make enough because it's a brand new product it'll probably be uh, supply constrained at right. launch so which design do you have your eye on well i yeah you know, i gotta say i'm not a high i'm not a high fashion guy <laughs> um i'm gonna have, yeah i got my sweater here it's very nice but i'm gonna go with the uh the cheapest one i think that's i think that's reasonable uh, the sport model and the regular model both look interesting to me. So it really comes down to what the feel is and uh, what the price is. But I, I think we've all decided that the, this product's going to range from what? I think 350 up to how much money you got. <laughs> right. that, there, there will be whatever, you know, I'm sure the gold, solid gold version will be available with all of the different bands for a huge sum of money. And I'm going to be down on the other side of that. Yeah. So you've been using the new iPhoto replacement. It's just called Photo. Photos, and yeah. uh, you wrote an interesting piece on your site, Six Colors. Um, can, and you admitted that, you, that your piece was very nerdy, but it, we do have nerds watching. So uh, tell us a little Super bit about nerd. what you discovered. <laughs> Super nerdy. Well, I mean, it's it's a development beta, so it's not uh, regular people can't get it yet, but it is going to be the replacement for iPhoto and Apple says for, for Aperture as well. And my story is because people were asking, how could it be? Apple says that when you import your iPhoto library, it doesn't take up any extra disk space. It, it doesn't double your disk space. And uh, th there's actually a reason for this. I think it's a really smart move on Apple's part because photo libraries are very, very large. And what they didn't want is to have people not be able to upgrade because they don't have the disk space to do to make a duplicate version of their library. So what they they're using something called a hard link, which is different from a uh, SimLink or an alias. Uh, which are are basically pointers at a file that's somewhere else on your hard drive. A hard link, the way you know, basically the way it works is two files appear on your drive, but it's actually they're both references to a, a file that kind of is in the ether or it's in both places at once. It's it's almost like the quantum physics of of, uh, of file systems. But the bottom line is, it does that. Every all the images in your iPhoto library get hard linked to images in your new Photos library, and at that point, if you delete your iPhoto library. 
um, you don't actually save any space because it keeps all those files because they're also in the photos library. So it's a, it's a, it's a clever way. Apple has had a lot of problems with people upgrading their iOS uh, software because not enough disk space is available to run the updates. And this seems to me on the Mac side like a very similar issue, which is let's make this as easy as possible, not make people not be able to update to photos because it's going to take you know, forever and it's going to cost them 300 gigabytes on their hard drive that they don't have. So it's a super nerdy thing. We've only ever seen the Mac use this before. I think in Time Machine, it uses this system to back up. It totally breaks all the rules of like how Mac users and most computer users, I think, think of their file system where like if I see an icon, that's the file. And it's sort of this one-to-one -one connection. And with hard links, it's not a one-to-one -one connection. It's this weird many-to-one connection. But in the end, it means you, know, you can make a new library and not copy all your photos over to it. It just sort of keeps them in both places simultaneously. Well, thank you so much. If people are interested in uh, even more of a super nerdy explanation of that, they can find it at <laughs> six, sixcolors.com, right? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jason. Thank you. Coming up, Yelp says you no longer have to wear pants, and Samsung's smart TV couldn't care less about what you have to say. But first, this episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Right now, NatureBox is giving you a chance to get a complimentary trial box of their most popular snacks, and you just have to pay $2 for shipping. Life is hectic, and it's hard to make the best snacking choices. When you're looking for a quick pick-me-up, do what I do. Get delicious, healthy snacks at naturebox.com. NatureBox has hundreds of delicious, nutritionist-approved snacks. They've got zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners, zero grams of trans fat, and no high-fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks with the bold flavors you crave. So in the afternoon when you're hungry, grab cinnamon-spiced almonds or sriracha pop-pops or cranberry pepita crisps. You know you're going to snack. Get smart about it with NatureBox. Start your trial today and get a complimentary sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank NatureBox for their support of tech news tonight. And now on to a few more stories we're following today. If you're anything like me, and I like to believe that you are, then when you have then when you or your children suspect you have any kind of medical condition, going to Google just makes it worse. You know what I'm talking about. Lethargy means Lyme disease. Restlessness means rabies. Well, Google is now trying to provide symptom searchers with a reason to come back online. Today, they started adding fact-checked medical information in the knowledge graph. That's the part of their instant search results and the, in the information they use for Google now on mobile devices. Now, Google is quick to point out that this still isn't medical advice, just guidance to be used in conjunction with the conversations you have with your doctor. And soon you'll be able to use Yelp for more than just restaurant reviews. Today, Yelp bought food delivery startup Eat24 for $134 million. The deal was announced on the Yelp blog where Eat24 was described as a food ordering service designed to keep you from having to cook, shop, or wear pants. And I'm just going to come out and say this, that unless the food is being delivered by a drone, I am guessing that those delivery people would appreciate it if you kept your pants on. And here's an update to a story we reported about Samsung's smart TVs. On Monday, we told you that Samsung's privacy policy included a bizarre warning. The fine print advised users of the smart TV to be careful, careful what they said around the TV because it was listening. Now, today, Samsung publicly clarified their privacy policy, saying that Samsung will collect your inter interactive voice commands only when you make a specific search request to the smart TV by clicking the activation button either on the remote control or on your screen and speaking into their microphone on the remote control. And finally, Randy Zuckerberg, sister of Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, has a cure for all you technology addicts. Zuckerberg has partnered with Celebrity Cruises and Canyon Ranch Spa to launch Take Care of Your Selfie, a line of spa treatments designed to encourage us to occasionally unplug and remove toxins associated with tech-related stress. Facial Time is a special facial meant to help cure skin that's been damaged by overexposure to screens. And Texacure is their manicure for fingers that have been wrecked from too much texting and emailing. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. 
And while you're getting your manicure, you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.